Hello, and welcome back to the Cisco Secure Cloud Native Security Spot On Series. My name is Ed McNicholas, and I'm a cybersecurity architect with Cisco Systems. In today's session, which is a continuation of part one, provisioning the infrastructure, we're going to talk about how we're going to deploy our infrastructure as code using GitOps and the CI CD pipeline. Going into you know what GitOps and obviously CI CD and how we're going to just do this deployment. Um, so GitOps is the idea of hey, I want to um, from my IDE or from my desktop, I want to update code in uh, a repo. And that repo could be you know in our case GitHub, and then that is going to trigger a CI CD pipeline build. Right. So every time we do that, um, the build's going to happen. Um, so that, that that's kind of how the GitOps works. So in, in our case, we're going to update our feature branch in our IDE. We're going to commit it to the repo. And we're going to create a pull request to main. We're going to merge features into main. Re Jenkins is going to trigger the pipeline, and it's going to deploy the infrastructure. So let's go into our code. Actually, let's go into uh, Git. And so I got the, 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 the GitHub desktop here, just so you guys can see this a little bit better. And then we have all the files that I just showed you um, that are, are pending a commit, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, a I'm gonna do a commit and I'm gonna say like deploy ENV. And as you see, I'm in the infra uh, branch. So let's do a commit to this. And we're going to push that into the infra branch up into our repo. And, and then we're going to create a pull request. So when we go to create a pull request, what we're doing is we're making a request to say, hey, pull this code into the repo. So take, take our code in infra and pull this into main. So we'll create the pull request. We'll make sure that you know we're checking that the merge is, is good and nobody else is doing anything. Obviously, it's just me. And then we'll actually do the merge. So when we do the merge, what's going to happen over in Jenkins is if you guys remember what we did, I'll go back into the dashboard and I'll go to the, the job itself. And if you guys remember what we did here is we check this little box to say period periodically check in every one minute. So what should be happening right now is because it's been a minute. Let's open up our, our blue ocean. And here we go. So the build starts. And as you can see, we have a checkout. We have now, this is just an echo of, hey, we're building the environment. Uh, we have the Terraform init. So let's take a look at the Terraform init. As you can see, we're pulling down all the provider plugins. And that has good, been good. And then finally, we do a Terraform apply. So within the Terraform apply, we're going to see it's going out, deploying all these things. So from the infrastructure module, we're deploying the AMIs and we're deploying uh, AWS EKS cluster and all the coolness that Terraform could do in our public clouds. And, and you'll see it kind of running through each little step, each little resource that's being deployed in this environment. So uh, this takes about 20 minutes to do the whole deployment because we have to deploy an EKS cluster. We have to deploy uh, an FTD instance and, and so on and so on. And we have to do a whole bunch of checks as well. And then we have to blast in the whole whole bunch of configuration from the Ansible playbooks. So this is going to take about 20 minutes. And so I'll pause it and we come back and then we'll take a look at the configuration. Okay. So now you can see everything was deployed by Terraform. And... As I scroll through here, you can see a whole bunch of infrastructure resources that have been deployed. Um, and then finally, uh, the outputs that we have. So we apply was complete here. Um, resources, 48 have been added. Um, and the outputs here are, so we have our EKS cluster API endpoint, which we're obviously gonna need. Um, we have the cluster name, which is called spot on prod. 
we have an EKS public IP address, which is the, the public IP address being exposed to the EKS node. Um, so our applications will be utilized via this IP address. Um, and then an FTD management IP address. So we need that obviously to manage the FTD. And then you can see the stages that, that the pipeline went through and everything was successful. So if we go into AWS, the first thing we're going to check out is the VPCs. So just making sure that our spot on VPCs were created. And if I go in here, click on VPC, you'll see uh, we have this uh, spot on VPC has been created. And then we have some subnets that were associated. So uh, we have a spot on pride management inside, outside, all that coolness. We have route tables that should be associated with it as well. So um, here are our spot on route tables. So an inside and the outside route table. Um, we have an internet gateway for spot on and we, we have a whole bunch of other stuff too as well. Um, the other thing that we want to take a look at is uh, our EC2 instances, right? So we had two EC, EC2 instances that we wanted to spin up. We wanted to spin up one for our FTD and we had one for our Kubernetes um, node itself. So them two EC2 instances have been spun up. And then we also asked for a Kubernetes service, right? So we deployed EKS. So we needed the EKS master. That's a managed service within Kubernetes. And then we wanted to associate that node that we spun up on that EC2 instance to the Kubernetes master. So we have this spot on prod EKS cluster. And then within that EKS cluster, um, we have that node associated with it. And if we go click in here right now, oh, I just have our default workloads that are in Kubernetes because we haven't deployed any apps. We'll do that later in the next part. Um, but uh, that shows all this. And then finally, let's take a look at what we provisioned or what we uh, configured with our Ansible playbooks. So we have our FTD device and as you can see it's in AWS and we have these IP addresses. So what we want to do is take a look first at our policies and make sure our policies are in there. So we have an outside policy allowing um, access to the Kubernetes service. So that's going into here. And then we have an outbound policy allowing all access to everything. We have some NAT here as well that we configured. Uh, so we have we want to be able to publicly um, expose the Kubernetes node to the internet. So we have a public NAT here that's doing that. And then the objects themselves that are in here. So we have the Kubernetes cluster, the external IP address that we're using. Um, we have some service objects as well uh, that we're using in our policies. So we have an Nginx app and we have a Yelp app. Um, this was all deployed via the Ansible playbook. And then we obviously have security zones and IP addresses and all that as well. So that's the first session that we're doing, right? So we have a, a complete infrastructure now deployed. We have a firepower threat defense sitting on the edge of that VPC that's securing us using firepower threat defense. Um, the next session we're going to be doing is security analytics. We're going to deploy some uh, microservices apps to secure. So here are some resources for you to go back to. This is our, our, our spot on series GitHub. Um, so go to that, and this will have all the code that we've deployed today. Um, I also put a couple other references into the multi-branch pipeline and all the DevOps tools we used in this session. Um, don't forget to go out and subscribe to the Spot On Series YouTube channel so you can get all cool sessions that we have on Spot On as well as this one. And thank you for joining this session. I hope that you enjoyed it, and you will enjoy our next session about cloud analytics.